Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Real World. Today I am taking a look at the Galaxy Note 4, a brand new phone by Samsung released just last month on the 17th. Before I get into the phone, let's look at some of the stuff that comes with it because some of it's actually quite interesting. We have the box is one of those standard fancy box, which I guess since they're standard and everybody has been doing them since, you know, the iPhone started it. They're not exactly fancy anymore now, are they? We have the standard instruction manuals that turns out to be almost 100% useless, just like most instruction manuals. We have a standard USB, micro USB cable. We have a not so standard power adapter and this is not so standard because it is an adaptive fast charging power adapter, meaning that it's one of those high power ones like on the, the iPad and I'm sure the new iPhone that requires a lot more power to charge. So that's something to keep in mind when using this. It doesn't like my normal USB chargers. Now, I don't know if that's just a setting in the software somewhere or if it just can't support other chargers. But my regular chargers that worked with the Nexus 4 don't work with this. However, plugging it into a standard USB port does work. So this might be smart enough to lower its power requirements when it's plugged into a USB port. And I just haven't found the setting so that I can plug it into a normal USB charger, but I don't know. Uh, a very interesting thing is actually the headset. Now, you might think, oh, but it's just a headset. Well, if you look at it, these aren't standard earbuds. They're in-ear headphones, which kind of confused me because I've never seen in-ear headphones that came with any electronic device ever. So I had to try them out. And you know what? These things right here are the best headphones that I have ever heard. Now, I admit I'm not an audiophile. My most expensive pair of headphones are a pair of Skull Candy Skull Crushers, and a lot of people consider them to be crap. Um, but yeah, these are by far the best that I have ever heard. Um, you know how uh, if you have normal headphones and you crank up the volume, you can hear it start to touch the upper end of what the headphones can do? So you, it starts to, you can hear it max out. I don't know exactly know how to describe it. Not an audiophile. But these ones, even if I use the headphone boost on this thing, which I will get to later, it doesn't do that. I can't max out these headphones. These are just really good headphones. I was absolutely astonished. Um, it also comes with the extra rubber pieces for the headphones in case your ears are different sizes or in case you destroy them, which is a distinct possibility going in and out of your ears, friction, blah, 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 blah. And then there's this guy. And I got very confused with what this thing was. I haven't, and you can tell I haven't even pulled it out of the package yet. I was very, very confused. It's just this metal clip thing. But further inside the package, which is a little hard to see, there are little pins that look like elongated versions of the people from the Game of Life. You know, like the ones you stick in the car. And once I saw that, I realized what they were. And what they go to is... Da -da -da -da, this guy. Yes, the phone is large enough that it has a stylus. And that's what these things are. The pins are extra tips for the stylist. And the metal clip is to pull the stylus out. So you just clip it down and pull out, and then you can replace it with one of the replacement tips. I guess in case the tip gets worn out or something. I don't know. Like possibly it gets uh, worn to a point where it's sharp and it's starting to scratch the screen or something, or at least risking scratching the screen. I don't know. But yeah, so we've got some pretty interesting stuff that came with it. I mean... The only generic stuff that came with it is the box, the manual, and the USB cable. Everything else is actually kind of weird. But for the price of it, I would expect weird. So let's take a look at the phone itself. Now, on initial glance, it might not look that big, at least on the video here. 
So for comparison's sake, here's an iPod Touch 4th Gen. Now, no, this is not the 5th Gen, but this is just one behind where it's starting to get big. And yeah, holy crap, um, there, there's a distinct difference in the size of this thing. As you can see, the screen actually extends the entire way around the phone. So this screen is an inch on each side larger than the iPod Touch. So this thing is quite large. Um, it's not terribly difficult to hold in the hand, but granted my hands are quite large themselves, but it is impossible to use with one thumb. I mean, I can't reach the top and the bottom at all <laughs> when I use my thumb. An entire corner is just completely lacking, but that's not a problem for me because I always use my phone two-handed. I don't know why I never use my phone one-handed. I don't like using my phone one-handed. I've always been that way, even with the old-fashioned flip phones. I've always held it with one hand and dialed with the other. I don't know why. I'm, I guess I'm weird that way. So let's take a quick look at the outside of this phone. The first thing that I noticed that struck me as actually kind of cool was the back. Now the back itself is this like faux leather plastic thing which honestly I don't like all that much. It's weird. It feels weird. It just doesn't look right. Yeah, I don't know how better to explain it. I, just, I don't like it, but it's not terrible. It's not really ba bad. But the first thing I noticed was this little cutout right here, this little wedge that probably isn't even showing up on the video. I can't tell on my itty bitty screen that I'm using. But what it is, is you can dig your thumb, your fingernail into it, and you can actually pull the back off. Now, I thought this was really, really cool and really, really useful, considering that once I dug further into the box, the battery wasn't in the phone. It was in the box, so it turned out to be a good thing. Um, but it means that I have a user-replaceable battery. This is something that none of the iDevices or the Nexus 4 or probably several other phones don't have. A user replaceable battery. Okay, now the battery is actually kind of interesting. It has uh, 3220 milliamp hours. Now that is huge. Um, and that actually does play into this thing. This thing has amazing battery life. I'm quite shocked with it. Uh, but other than that, we have the standard micro SIM slot. We have a micro SD card slot, another thing that the Nexus 4 did not have. Uh, we have our speaker down here, which is actually shockingly good. I was quite amazed by it. Uh, we have the stylus sticking out here. We have the camera flash, and I believe that is a proximity sensor, probably for focusing. I can't say for 100% certain because I can't find any diagrams on the back of the phone. And the, de the, the, the list of the features aren't very detailed. It doesn't say where these things are. So that might be a proximity sensor. That might be something else entirely. I'm not 100% sure. The camera seems to be a bit large and probably for a reason it is a 16 megapixel camera now that's not the highest i've ever seen on a phone the highest i've ever seen on a phone was what 42 megapixel on that one windows phone that like nobody bought but this is still pretty high now this is a statistic i heard a long time ago that five megapixel was all that was required to be as good as film. This is more than three times that. So this is a pretty crazy camera. And I have taken several pictures with this camera. And as long as the lighting is good, it takes pretty good pictures. Now, if it's in low light situations, it's still pretty good. I mean, it's probably the best camera on a phone that I've ever seen but it's not really good if you zoom in. You can definitely tell the artifacts from low light situations if you zoom in, but whatever. So let's put the back 
back on this thing. Which I kind of also don't like how it just snaps in, but I guess that's probably easier than most of the other options, but, you know, whatever. Oh, the sides. We have the standard power button. That's it on that side. We have down here, obviously, the stylist slot. The S Pen, as Samsung calls it. We have the micro USB port, which does data charging and video output. We have two little tiny holes right here, which are two microphones. Two of the three microphones that are built into this thing. Go figure. On this side, we have the volume rocker and nothing else. On the top, we have the headphone jack, as to be expected. We have the third microphone. And then over here, this I thought was really cool once I looked at it. I'm looking at it, I'm like, what is that? And I look closer at it and I realize that it's flat. It's not like a hole or anything, like the headphone jack or the microphone hole. It's flat and it's black. And I'm like, what is that? And I realized, and I confirmed this, it's an infrared transmitter. So this thing can be a TV remote. And it is a TV remote. <laughs> it actually, the, this comes with software that can control the IR transmitter and control TVs. I've used it, it works, but you know, I don't use it a lot because I don't watch too much TV. On the front, we have the speaker, obviously. Over here, we actually have two sensors, one for gesture sensor sensors, and then a proximity sensor and a light sensor. We have the front-facing camera, which is 3.2 megapixels, I believe. Not that powerful, but hey, I believe the Nexus 4 was one point something, so not that great. Down here, we have the home button, which is a hard home button, so it's a solid button. On either side of this, which you can just barely make out, are the soft keys. Well, they're not really soft keys, are they? I mean, they're not physical buttons, but they're hard-coded. And we got the window button on this side and the back button on this side. Now, that actually turns out to be annoying because it's not adaptable. So programs that were designed for before Android decided that they only needed three buttons instead of four don't work all that well because they can't add the fourth button. Now, that also turns out to be not a big problem. Samsung's got that one covered. And let's take a look at this thing. Now, the screen itself is an outright amazing screen. I am just floored by this screen. It is, let's see, it is a 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AM OLED 2560 by 1440. Now I understood half of that, okay? 5.7 inches, that's 5.7 inches. Quad HD, I kind of understand. I think the term is stupid, but I understand it. It's four times 720p. Okay. AM OLED. Okay. So I know what LED stands for. That's light emitting diode. I understand O stands for organic. So it's an organic light emitting diode. So that means there's carbon somewhere in there. But I have no idea what A and M stand for or why what makes it super. Not a clue. I do, however, know what the 2560 by 1440 means. It's 2560 by 1440. So this is a 1440p screen, making it the highest resolution device I own. Okay, and I own a 52-inch TV, a 42-inch TV, a 31-inch LCD monitor, a 32-inch TV. None of them are this high resolution. The highest I have is 1080, and that's one of my TVs. The other giant TV is 720p, and the odd thing is, it's the big one. It's the 52-inch TV. It's 720p. It's very old. It's plasma screen. It's not actually that good. Uh, so let's actually take a look at a few more stats. I actually have them pulled up here. This is from the Samsung website directly. Uh, dimensions, I don't really give a crap. You have uh, The actual size doesn't really matter. The weight, however, does. I guess that should be something I should point out. It's 176 gram. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means it's heavier than most other phones. But to be perfectly honest, 
it's not that heavy. I've never had a problem with its weight. The only reason I even know that it's heavier than other phones is when I was looking up statistics for it, it specifically stated that it was heavier than other phones. But I'm a scrawny little bastard. I'm not that strong. And I haven't noticed any weight problems with this. It doesn't weigh me down or anything like that. I'm not noticing a problem with its weight. Your results may vary, though. I don't know. Somehow I doubt it. Now, inside of this thing is where it gets really interesting. It's got a 2.7 gigahertz quad core process, which I think is hilarious. I think it actually means processor, but whatever. And 2.7 gigahertz quad core processor. Okay, that is more powerful than all but two devices in my entire house. Now, I have a lot of computers, laptops, tablets, phones, and the only thing that's more only two things that are more powerful than this are my two desktop PCs. I don't even have a I don't even have a laptop more powerful than this thing. Holy crap. Now, it's also got a 1.9 gigahertz octa-core and it says 1.9 gigahertz quad plus 1.3 gigahertz quad core process. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but I think that's the video processor. So it's got like, I mean, it's integrated, but it's got like its own video card, which is really, really awesome. And it fits with how good this screen is. This screen is just absolutely stellar. Of course, that means that it has power consumption issues, but as you can see, it's 9.02 p.m. This phone has been on and heavily used for the past 13 hours, and it's at 98% battery. So the extra power is not very noticeable. It's got three gig of RAM. Now that's three gig dedicated RAM, okay? I'm making this distinction because it also has 32 gig internal storage. So that, think of it like it's a computer. You have the RAM and then you have the hard drive. So this has got three gig RAM and a 32 gig hard drive. It's actually making a distinction, unlike every other phone that I've ever owned, where it used the internal storage as RAM, which is really cool. It supports micro SD up to 128 gig. I've got a 32 gig stick in there because I couldn't find my spare 64 gig stick, which now that I think about it, I don't think actually exists. And it was a 32 gig stick, but eh, whatever. The network, uh, 2G, 3G, 4G. I have this on T-Mobile, so it supports H as well. I have been using this and it is, it's not blazing fast, but that's because I've been using T-Mobile forever and I've had H. This is my first actual 4G phone, but the Nexus 4, while technically having a 4G chip, could never use it. It had H and could use H. Now, H is actually pretty fast. So the difference between H and 4G wasn't very noticeable to me. However, I have done tests on this thing and I have gotten it to 10 megabits per second down and three megabits per second up. Now that's, hmm, I would say that's high-speed DSL, but I think that's a little faster than high-speed DSL. I think that's low-end cable. So pretty speedy. Now it does say that it can support 150 by 50 or 300 by 50. So it's actually expecting even faster 4G than we're being offered. It's actually expecting that 3G is faster than what we're getting 4G. So that that's T-Mobile problem though, which kind of sucks. Uh, we've gone over the camera. The front camera is a 3.7 megapixel, uh, but apparently the f-stop being 1.9 on both these cameras is like really weird, I guess, because they kind of hyped it up when I was doing research. Uh, it also has a really neat feature that I totally forgot about. It does, the camera here does different angles. It does the standard 90 degree, which actually isn't a lot, and then it does 120 degrees. Now, in case you're curious, the degrees I'm talking about are where the picture ends on each side. So over here, to over here on the video, for example. Uh, this is, I'm using a GoPro, so I actually have a pretty wide angle. I think it's, 
I actually don't know <laughs> what the degrees are, um, but it is pretty wide. And 120 degrees is really wide. That's wider than most security cameras that I've found. Uh, rear camera, live HDR, which it's okay. It doesn't work all that well, but it works good enough. Uh, OS, Android 4.4, brand spanking new. So it comes with the latest OS, but I think that's just because Android seems to have slowed down on its updates a little bit. Uh, connectivity. Now, this is where it gets interesting. It's got Wi-Fi, which is to be expected, but it supports like all of the Wi-Fi's, A, B, G, N, and AC, which I've never even played with. So I have no idea what AC actually does. Uh, it also does MIMO, which if I remember correctly is municipal Wi-Fi. So if you have uh, Wi-Fi provided from your city government, that's, that's, well, a technology for that is MIMO. I don't know if you have MIMO, but yeah, whatever. Uh, it's got Download Booster, which is actually really sweet. Uh, that I mean, Download Booster, that sounds like some kind of gimmick, doesn't it? I mean, it sounds like one of those fake things you got in dial-up days where the ISP would compress your data and then send it to you. So you would get low-quality pictures, even lower-quality pictures back in dial-up days. This doesn't do that specifically. What it does is it uses the 4G and the Wi-Fi simultaneously. So it uses both connections to download everything that much faster. So it downloads like one picture on this side and another picture on this side, so you get both pictures simultaneously. I think that just goes to show how fast this bloody phone is that it can do that. Holy shit. Uh, it's got the NFC chip on the back, which is to be expected. I have it turned off because I never use it. It's got Bluetooth version 4.1, which, I don't know what the point one stands for really, but I know if Bluetooth four is considered like ultra low powered or something like that, that's what my watch uses is ultra low powered Bluetooth four, which is really nice because that helps with battery power. It's got Ant Plus, which I had to look it up because I've never used anything called Ant Plus before. I've never even seen anything called Ant Plus before. And Ant by itself, without the plus, seems to be medical systems kind of thing. It connects to like pacemakers and heart monitors and crap like that. So medical grade stuff. Ant Plus is consumer grade that stuff. And at that point, we're talking about uh, exercise stuff. So stuff you wear around your wrist to keep track of your heart and, you know, pedometers and that kind of thing. Which now I think about as a little silly because there's a pedometer built into the phone because it's the accelerometer. Eh, whatever. Uh, it's got USB 2.0. Now that's a strange thing. This phone is quite expensive at $750. Putting USB 2.0 is a little strange considering the, the Note, the, or the, not the Note 3. The Note 3 also had that problem. But considering other Samsung phones have USB 3.0, giving this one USB 2.0 is a little strange. Now, that's not necessarily a problem, considering USB 2.0 runs pretty bloody fast to begin with. So it might be a power thing. Maybe USB 3.0 takes up too much power. I don't know. I actually have no idea why they decided to do that. Then it also has MHL 3.0. Now I had to look up that one as well. That is the display interface that I was pointing out earlier. It's the adapter, it connects to HDMI, supports 4K resolutions. Now I don't know if that means that this phone itself can output 4K. Would be kind of cool if it did, but it does mean that it can output full 1440p resolution if you have the proper adapter. I do not have the proper adapter. I was hoping I did, but I don't. Uh, IR LED, we pointed that already. Battery, we pointed that out already. Audio, it supports MP3, AAC, which is like iTunes stuff, WMA. AMR, NB, no idea what that is. WB, which I think is connected. AMR, NB, WB, don't actually know that one. Vorbis, which I know that one. That's actually HTML5 stuff. Um, well, it's used in HTML5. I know it wasn't actually designed for HTML5, but whatever. Uh, FLAC, which is lossless audio, which is really cool because a lot of my stuff is in FLAC. Uh, 
I have no idea what these things are, uh, except for the Extra Volume 2.0, okay? So the Extra Volume is what I was telling you about earlier with the headphones. Now, Extra Volume sounds also like another gimmick. Uh, basically, what it sounds like, it sounds like somebody capped off the volume, said, yeah, you're only allowed to use 75% of your volume, and then anything above that is considered extra. Not in this case. Now, I've compared it between this phone and the Nexus 4. The Nexus 4 at 100% volume is this thing at what it calls 100% volume. But that's only about 60% of the way across the volume control. After that, it does get considerably louder. So I was kind of shocked, honestly. I thought it was a gimmick, but it's not. Uh, three mics for directional voice recording. Not sure how to use that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, then we got the S Pen. That is this guy right here. And, yeah, you can see that I pulled it out. I get this air command thing. But you can also see that I'm not actually touching it. I am, apparently, 15 millimeters off the screen and it's noticing where everything is. So it's actually interacting with the phone when I'm hovering, okay? And when I tap is when I'm clicking, which is actually kind of a cool thing. Have you ever come across a website that you're trying to surf, but the design was poor for phones because it had one of those menu systems that you had to hover over? Well, this takes care of that problem. You can still hover over them. Now that's still, Technically, poor web development, but let's not go there. Ah, the sensors. The sensors are actually quite interesting, too, because there's so much in here. It's insane how much is actually in here. We have the gesture sensor. That's what I was pointing out up here. It's got an accelerometer, which is standard. Geomagnetic, okay, so it's got a compass. A gyroscope, well, that's standard. RGB ambient light, not standard, but common. Proximity sensor, cool. Barometer, okay. A hall sensor, which I did have to Google, and if I understand it correctly, it's kind of like a proximity sensor, just a little bit more advanced. I think it's used to help with a GPS. A finger scanner, ooh, that's something I completely forgot. In this button down here, there is a fingerprint reader. And it's kind of cool that, you know, I can lock my phone based on my thumbprint. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I won't use it because uh, I forget who told me it, but there was a security expert that actually said, do not use a security or piece or do not use something for security that you only have one of. So like, you can use passwords because you can pick any passwords. If your password is compromised, you can change your password. But if your thumbprint is compromised, you can't exactly change your thumbprint. You kind of really only have 10 total possibilities outside of taking off your shoes every time. So you're kind of limited on the possibilities when it comes to biometrics. So I'm probably not going to be ever fiddling with the thumbprint reader. Along with the fact that if I need somebody else to get into my phone, I want to be able to tell them my password. I don't want, I don't need them, to, you know, I don't want them to be forced to come to me to unlock my phone. Some people may like that, some people don't. All right, so it's got a UV sensor and an HRM sensor, which I did look up and now I forget what it was. Must not be important. I don't know how to use half of these sensors on this phone. I would assume they're actually used for behind the scenes stuff like the uh, proximity sensor that would be used for when you put the phone up to your ear it turns off the screen saves power also avoids ear dialing which is very useful that's something that's actually kind of it's not everywhere but it is common it's common enough now what do i think about this phone in general first thing i say think right off the top of my head is I can't wait until they make a version of Cyanogen for it. I really do not like the Samsung software that comes with it. Uh, now, it works. It's functional. It's speedy. I have never had a performance issue with it. The problem comes with the pre-installed bullcrap. Okay, and there are a ton of it. 
also from T-Mobile, so we can't just blame Samsung on this. Part of it's T-Mobile's fault as well. And one of the examples I would like to give about absolute bullcrap on this phone, and this is something you should pay attention to if you have one of these phones or if you're thinking about one of these phones. There is an app on there called T-Mobile TV. I have it turned off so I can't even show it to you because I read the EULA and the EULA states that if you agree to the EULA, you agree to let them watch all the traffic that's coming from this phone. Okay, that might just be for the TV app, but whatever. But it also states that it can access any and all software on this phone. Okay, and it's, it's period, how did it put it? It put it in a really weird way. It was like periodic, un, unnotified or something like that. Like, They'll do it every now and then. They won't tell you they're doing it, and they'll scan your entire phone for all the crap that's on your phone. Now, I could take a guess. It's probably not full-blown malicious. It's probably more along the lines of they want to make sure you're not copying the stuff that you're watching through their app. I, however, do not agree with it, and I turned off the app. Now, I say turned off the app because I can't fucking uninstall it. And that pisses me off to absolutely no end. I can turn it off, which just disables it, but I can't uninstall it. So it's sitting there taking up space and doing God only knows what else it's doing, even though I told it to turn off. I don't want to know. But outside of that, this is a really nice phone. Like I said, I can't wait until Cyanogen Mod comes out for it. But I hope that Cyanogen Mod actually does a few things that this phone does do. Like, remember what I was pointing out about the old apps not being able to work properly with the selections down here because you can't have the menu button? Well, they, Samsung thought of this. And they included a function in this phone that you have to enable. It's not enabled by default. Where you can swipe in from the side and pull up a soft button kind of thing. So we have the menu button now. At least I can tell it to put it there. So I can use that old app. I just can't use the... I, well, I can use that button and that button, but I don't have a menu button down here. I just swipe in and boom, there we go. And it works pretty much everywhere. It's the alt-click kind of thing. Or the press and hold click, I should say. For the record, the press and hold did not work on the app I was looking at. So we, it's like I said, it's a pretty powerful system. I'm not going to delve too deeply into the software because like I said, I'm waiting until Cyanogen Mod comes out for it because that's one of the first things I'm going to be doing is putting Cyanogen Mod on this because I can Cyanogen Mod is really good because it tends to focus on performance over function, I guess, kind of. It, it basically is trying to make an operating system instead of an interface. What Samsung tried to do was make an interface so that you go through Samsung stuff to do what you want to do on your phone. Now, it allows you to install other things, but it's still allowing you to. It's Samsung's being nice to you. Cyanogen Mod is building an operating system, and they expect you to make the interface, which I really, really like. That lightens up the load, that pulls stuff off of the processor. There's crap running on this thing that I don't even know what the hell it is. For example, if I go into settings, and this settings is kind of ridiculous. There are so many different settings, and they're repeated, and it's annoying as hell. If I go into application manager, zip over to all, scroll down. Where are you? Come on. There's a lot of stuff on here, as you can see. A lot of it is Android built-in stuff, so that's not a big, big problem. But there is a lot of crap in here that I can't actually even turn off. And I'm trying to find the One app, because I can't remember what it's called right now. There it is. IMS Settings and IMS Logger. Now, these two cannot be turned off. I cannot turn them off. I can force stop them, but I cannot shut off the notifications, and I cannot turn it off. That annoys the hell out of me. So I looked into it. I'm like, what is this thing? And a lot of people are asking the same exact question because apparently it's glitched and it crashes quite often. But 
the one thing that I did find that actually even suggested what it could be suggests that it's DRM, basically. Uh, digital rights management software. Which I don't want on my phone because it's just wasting processor power. I don't give a crap. Now, there is one thing hilarious about it. If you look at this thing and look at the picture, it's a kid in a ghost costume with a handful of candy and a sword behind his back. And the first thing I thought is, okay, that's interesting because Halloween's coming up. And then I realized that they're not just going to change an icon just for Halloween. Okay, they might, but they probably more than likely didn't. And I suddenly realized what it means. This is DRM software. That kid is not a kid dressed up for Halloween. That kid is hiding his face saying, here, here's a little bit of candy, but I'm probably going to stab you in the face. Because that's what DRM is. DRM is, here, here's a little bit of your software, but I'm probably going to stab you in the face whenever the fuck I feel like it. Can you tell I hate DRM? So, yeah. Ooh, that's an interesting thing that I just noticed. 8 gig used, 16 gig free. I hit the button by accident. So, 16 gig free? That's interesting. Why don't I have my full 32 gig? Is, is it smart enough to say that only apps can only take up 16 gig and the other 16 gig is for whatever you want? No, that doesn't make sense because it says 8 gig used. Wait a second, let's do some math. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 30, 24. Okay, so it's saying I have 24 total gig storage. All right, that fits. Uh, assume a little bit of loss because of the conversion between uh, gigabit and gibibit. And a little bit of loss for the hard hard, or for the operating system itself, because they're not going to count the operating system. So they're going to say that, that, yeah, okay. All right, so false alarm, no worries. But yeah, so I kind of like this. There's a lot of really interesting settings possibilities in here. Uh, like I haven't even played with the gestures yet. Uh, I did fiddle with the fingerprint scanner, but as I said, I don't want to use it because I don't you know, want to limit myself in case, like, say, my thumbprint gets damaged or removed. Hey, you never know. Car accidents happen. Um, I never played with easy mode because screw easy mode. And it's got some pretty, also some pretty interesting features. It's got one-handed operation, which we can reduce screen size. So it will actually take this entire screen and squeeze it into about this big of an area. So about the same size as the Nexus 4 screen. A neat trick, but yeah. The side key panel, that's that thing that I set up. One-handed input, it basically, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, you could see it from here. It's just taking a smaller input and shoving it to one side or the other of the screen, dependent on if you're right-handed or left-handed. I don't use it because, you know, I use my phone two-handed. Uh, this blocking mode, no, that's not what I want. Disable notifications for selected functions when incoming calls are blocked. Ah, okay, that's cool. So enhanced blacklist for your phone. That's cool. Uh, there was another thing. Is that private mode? I think that's private mode. Yes, private mode. Now, private mode is actually pretty sweet. There are two different layers of security. Well, technically, there are three different layers of security. Uh, there is the internal encryption. So I can encrypt the SD card on here, both the internal card and the external card. So I can encrypt both of them. Um, I haven't yet, because you have to plug it in and leave it plugged in for several hours to do it. But uh, then there's the standard um, you know, lock screen. Like when it comes up and you type in like the pin number or the password or something, which I just have disabled for this, for this video. And then there's private mode which is really awesome. I haven't fiddled with it too hard yet, but what it is, is you can set things to be private. So that way, if you want to, you can type in the password or the pin number or whatever to get into the main interface. And then if you want to get into whatever you set to private, 
you have to type in another <laughs> code, which is really, really cool. Um, there's a lot of concern recently, especially recently, about cops looking through your phone. That's why encryption is becoming a big thing. That's why there's this whole huge debate with Apple and Google deciding to encrypt things by default. Wait, does that mean that my phone is encrypted already or is not encrypted and they're doing it in the next update? They might be doing it in the next update because there's a whole hell of a lot of debate over it. There's a lot of people at the FBI kind of freaking out about Google doing this, uh, Google and Apple doing this. I don't want to, you know, I want to give credit where credit is due. Apple is making a right decision by encrypting their phones by default. So is Google. I may not like Apple, but they're doing the right thing. Got to give credit where credit is due. Now, um, there is a big, huge thing about encryption on the phone, and the problem does stem mostly from cops. And one of the things that came out recently is that there was a cop that got into somebody's phone. Basically, what it was is the person was arrested, I believe, for being drunk in public or something like that. I don't actually know. But she was arrested and put in jail. And then she asked the cop to get a phone number so she could call somebody. So she gave the cop her password to her phone. And the, and the cop gave her the phone number and she called that person. Well, later on, it turns out that that cop kept digging through her phone, found naughty photos of her, and spread them around the office. Now, for what he was saying, it's very common for police to do that. Now, that's a big thing. But that also brings up a possibility about, say, your friends doing that. Okay, which is probably far more likely, just far less publicized. <laughs> so you can put your personal photos underneath another layer of protection, which is really, really cool. I love that idea. I do want to play with that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I haven't had this phone for very long. There was a screw up in T-Mobile shipping, uh, which now there is advantage to buying it from T-Mobile and the advantage is I didn't pay $750 for this phone. I'm not paying $750 for this phone. In total, I'm paying $720 for this phone plus shipping, which makes it $750. But I'm paying it monthly. So T-Mobile doesn't have contracts, but they still allow you to pay for a phone monthly. I'm paying like $35 a month on top of my current bill already for this phone. So I'm not, I haven't even paid bill one yet. But uh, if you can avoid buying from T-Mobile, avoid buying from T-Mobile because the shipping department apparently is an idiot. I ordered this thing with plenty of time for shipping, told them I want overnight shipping, so it should come tomorrow, was confirmed that it was supposed to come tomorrow. Well, apparently they were supposed to send me an email confirming that I agree to pay this monthly, but they never sent the email. So the next day, I call them up and be like, hey, Nobody ever sent me the email. And it was 4 p.m. And if anybody knows, in the United States, 4, uh, 6 p.m. is pretty much the deadline for overnight shipping. If you can get an order in before 6 p.m., it can be overnight shipped. Well, I call them at 4 p.m. because the UPS guy shows up at 3 and say, hey, something screwed up. I'm not, I don't have my phone. And they said, oh, well, nobody ever sent you the email. So I confirmed that they sent me the email. Or I, can, I got the email I agreed to it. I confirmed with them on the phone that I agreed to it. And they said, oh, well, you'll get your phone tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Well, the next day shows up. I check the tracking information or I check the order information on the website and it says pending order. So they didn't even bother processing the order after I did it. So yeah, if you can avoid T-Mobile, avoid T-Mobile. Well, shipping anyways, the T-Mobile service outside of a few problems with signal strength, is just outright amazing. Um, I have unlimited data on this, and this is truly unlimited, which turns out to be really good because this thing comes in with tethering built in, which I was absolutely floored because, I mean, it's tethering. Don't cell phone companies have problems with tethering? Eh, whatever. But yeah, so I have tethering on this thing by default, and believe me, I use it because the internet at work sucks. We're waiting until we can get Vi Verizon Fios down there right now. We just have Comcast business and it's kind of not stable, not good. So I just use this thing in tethering and boom, done. 
works significantly better. So, yes, that is the Note 4. Overall opinion, I'd have to say this is an absolutely outright amazing phone. I am floored by what this phone can do. Dumbfounded even. I don't even know how to use half of these things. I had to Google what half these things were. Just that's how much stuff is crammed into this phone. And while it's huge this way, most of it is being taken up by the screen and that battery. So it's got all of that stuff crammed into this little tiny, relatively speaking, phone. So I'm just absolutely floored. Do I think it's worth $750? Yes. The hardware that's in here is worth $750. The screen is outright amazing. The first thing I did with this screen is copied uh, the Hobbit, the original Hobbit, onto this phone to watch it. That's a 6.5 gig file. I ripped it directly from the Blu-ray so I knew it was good quality, full 1080p rip. Uh, it was my Blu-ray for the record, so anybody bitching about it, I actually own that Blu-ray. I own every single Hobbit. Or I, I own all of the Lord of the Rings. Um, I own all of it. So anybody complaining about me ripping it can go screw themselves. But so that's the first thing I did was look at this thing with the highest resolution video I could find. And that would be The Hobbit. And it just is stunning how pretty this screen is. It is an absolutely amazing screen. The colors are vibrant and beautiful. It's not going to show up on a YouTube video. Totally not going to show up on a YouTube video, and I'm sorry about that. But it is an absolutely beautiful screen. Uh, all of the sensors that are built into this thing, I'm sure if I ever figure out how to use them, they would be insanely useful. All of the extra little functions that this thing does, the power that it has, the storage capacity, it's absolutely and completely worth it if you're going to use all of that. Now, that's the big kicker there. If you're going to use all of the stuff that's in this phone, yes, definitely buy this phone. This is an amazing phone. If you're not going to use all this stuff in this phone, don't buy this phone <laughs> because it is bloody expensive. And if you're only going to use half of it, you're wasting half of your money. Whew. But yes, this is a really good phone. Um, I should probably point it out. It does charge in about an hour. Um, I think they actually rate it from 50% to 100% it charges in an hour. So I can imagine it would charge within two hours from zero to 100. But whatever. So yes, this is an absolutely amazing phone. It's worth the money if you're going to use all of it. I'm going to try to use all of it because it does way more than even I realized it did. So... That's my opinion on this phone. I hope it was informative, and I hope it convinced some people one way or the other. I actually don't care. Uh, if it convinced you to buy the phone, that's awesome. If it convinced you not to buy the phone and go look at somewhere else, that's actually awesome as well because it means that my job here is done. So I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.